So in this screencast, I'm going to talk about how to plot the graph of a function in a spreadsheet, and I will use Excel, but the principles should work um, in any spreadsheet. The details you might have to look up online. So the function I'm going to plot is f of x equal 2e to the minus x sine of 6x. So let's go over to Excel and get started. So I'm just going to write down the function here in the cell so we don't forget what it is. 2e to the minus x times the sine of 6x. That's just for reference. And let's make this a little bigger. Okay. So, um, so I could just start directly with this function, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit more general and I'm going to give each of those numbers a name. I'm going to give the 2, I'm going to rename it A, and I'll put a 2 there, and then I'll call a 6, call that B, and this way I can easily change my plot later if I wanted to plot, say, 3e to the minus x times the sine of 4x, for example. So the other things that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to choose where the bottom end, so I'm going to call it x0, and where the top end of my plotting interval will be. So for now I'll just start from 0 to 1. And I also should decide how many points I'm going to plot the function at. So what I'll do is I'll decide on 20 of them, and now the interval between them will be this number. So that number I get to by referring to b6. So this is going to be equal b6 minus b5. And then I'm going to divide that up into 20 separate parts. So now I need to evaluate the function at each of those 20 parts. So the first thing I need to do is start defining my x values. So let's put an x above here, and then we'll put f of x over here. So my first x value is going to be this one here in b5. So I'll just refer to that directly. x, the first one is equal to b5. In the next one, I'm going to refer simply to the previous one and add whatever my dx is. So I'm going to add b7. Now, you'll see what happens when I do that. Oh, I call this dt, I should have called it dx. That's for a small interval in x that I'm going to use to plot. So, um, <clears throat> so here you'll notice now if I copy this over, I get something strange happening. And if you look at each of the cells, if you look up here, you'll see this is d3 plus b7, and then the next one is d4 plus b8. The d4 is correct, but the b8 is wrong. I still want to refer to the same b7. So the way we do that is instead of writing just b7, we put a dollar sign in front of each of the parts that we want to lock down. So I don't actually need the b locked down. I can only lock down the 7 and still work, but let's see what happens. So now if I copy this, I now increment correctly. You'll notice each formula is exactly b7. Now if I was copying it to a different column, I'd also want to lock down the b doesn't really matter in this case. So now we need to enter the formula for the function. And this will be, now I could write 2, but I've put the number over here as well. So I'm going to use this one, b3. And I don't want that to move, so I'm going to lock that down as well. And why not? I'll put dollar signs in front of both, just so you can see the technique. And then I multiply that by the exponential of minus, and now I need the x value. I want that x value to change as I go down, so no dollar signs there. And then sine of, and now I need this guy, but with this guy, I need to have dollar signs because I want to always refer to that value of 6. And I multiply that value of 6 by the current x value, which is this entry right here. And that should give me the correct value. So now I can copy this all the way down. 
And you'll notice I haven't gone far enough. I've only gone from 3 to 11, so I didn't get all the way to 1, which is my final. But if I were to copy this guy all the way down to 20, what is it, 22, 23, then we see I get all the way up to 1. And there we go. So these are my x and y values. So now there's a few ways to do this. I can highlight them before I start doing the plot, or I can just make my plot first and add those later. Just to see the general technique, I'm going to do the latter. So let's go to charts. And we want to add, these are all the options. You may be tempted to make a line, but that turns out not to be the best when you're plotting x's against y's. So I'm going to use a scatter plot. And because I'm not really interested in seeing the individual locations of the points I'm plotting, I'm going to go with a straight line scatter. I prefer not to use the smooth ones because I don't really know what the smoothing is doing and I'd rather see my little straight line segments between my discrete estimates. So you can see here roughly where the points are by where the kinks in the graph are. Now it automatically knew or guessed that that's the, these are the two columns that I wanted to plot. But if it hadn't been so clear to the clever computer, I might have to add them myself. And the way to do that is select data and you can add a new one here and then you need to fill in the X and Y values here. I'll do that in another screencast when the computer hasn't outsmarted me. Okay, so that's the plot that we were interested in and I will continue on with other techniques once you've plotted things in a separate screencast.